Northern Australia has vast tracts of land that could be used for intensive agriculture. Australia is also ideally positioned on the doorstep of Asia, with rapidly growing populations across the region demanding increased supplies of safe and reliable food. Brazil's advancements in agriculture over the last three decades provides a benchmark for how countries might rapidly develop agricultural capacity and capability. With significant pasture expansion, Brazil's dramatic productivity gains have seen gross commodity exports rise to rival the United States. Government support proved critical through measures such as fixed development loans and intensive investment in agricultural research aimed at improving yields. Whilst in a similar equatorial band to Brazil, Northern Australia faces far greater environmental challenges. Sustained average temperatures too high to grow some crops. Higher evapotranspiration rates, meaning water storages will have to be larger and deeper. High rainfall variability that can cripple crops in up to 8 out of 10 years. Lower rainfall amounts and uneven distribution that can significantly hamper crops during critical growth months. A snapshot comparison of average rainfall between Brazil and key Australian regions demonstrates the size of the challenge. This combination of climate and environment adds significant complexity and risk to growing crops on rainfall alone. Irrigation is critical to support reliable and sustainable production. However, developing land and infrastructure adds significant costs, as much as 9,000 Australian dollars per hectare. We looked at the cost and return of developing on-farm irrigation by comparing Australia's two most important agricultural sectors. For grains and oilseeds, financial returns are likely to be negative. Grain and soybean prices would need to rise by 70 to 100% to support the cost of investment. The beef sector, however, can be illustrated to show positive financial returns of up to 14% per annum. ANZ further modelled the true potential of the region by gauging how much water might be sustainably harvested through tapping into groundwater as well as stream flow sources. The case for groundwater harvesting is hardly compelling. Estimates suggest there may be as little as 600 gigalitres available per annum. The associated capex investment of up to a billion dollars to tap into this translate to a potential profit uplifts of only 50 to 140 million per annum. By comparing the estimated groundwater available to major dams across Australia, the small-scale supply potential becomes immediately evident. The case for stream flow harvesting, however, presents a different picture. Find out more by contacting ANZ to get a copy of the full report from Mole Hill to Mountain, available now.